Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and online violin tutor. So today I'm going to talk to you about three reasons you are not improving on the violin. But before we do go ahead with that, I just want to very quickly tell you about my 1 to 30 violin course. I know a lot of you out, a lot of you watching out there don't know that I have a 1 to 30 violin course and it's a really good one because it does take you from a complete beginner to a very decent intermediate level player. So my 1 to 30 violin course is a fully comprehensive and professional course that guarantees to take you from a complete beginner to an accomplished intermediate level by the end of it. The course is very simple and easy to understand without the commitment of an in-person tutor, but it does guarantee to give you the same level of skill that you would get from a private tutor. The course has been designed so that anyone of any age and any level can follow it. The lessons and videos are super easy to follow and absolutely no prior knowledge of any instrument or music is needed to start this course. The course is going to cover everything from how to hold the violin, how to hold the bow, how to read music, there's going to be some technical exercises in there to prove your skill and dexterity, music theory, bowing techniques, more complex pieces and just really just much much more. There's no other course like this available on the internet and the results and re reviews absolutely speak for themselves. My course will take you from this is fully downloadable, is available worldwide, and you can purchase from my shop, www.amsmusicshop.com. It is $59.99 US dollars, and you can get started straight away. I should add in that these books are 100% downloadable, so there is nothing physical that will be shipped out to you. So all you're gonna need is your violin and bow and your enthusiasm to get started. I'd also just like to quickly mention as well about my two subscription websites. I've got a Patreon one and I've got my, my own one, uh, online violin tutor. Dot com. Both of them are exactly the same, they're just subscription websites, $10 monthly, but they give you access to my complete back catalogue of violin sheet music, there's some violin uh, cover pieces in there as well, there's a little bit of easy piano music, there's some violin backing tracks, there's a couple of other bits and bobs as well. It's uh, a $10 monthly subscription, but the catalogue is added to on a monthly basis. And off the top of my head, there are, I think, just over 800 sheets of easy violin sheet music that you can quickly gain access to. But it's either or, so don't subscribe. There's no need to subscribe to both of them. Either subscribe to my Patreon, either subscribe to my website. All the details uh, will be underneath this video for you. Okay, so the first reason that you may not be improving on the violin is that you are playing on a poor quality student violin. And by that I'm talking sort of, you know, the $100 violins, the $50 violins, those ones. They're really not great to play on. Um, I, you know, I've, I've spoken about it so many times on, on my channel. They're really not that great. In a nutshell, they're very, very difficult to tune because the peg boxes aren't made very well. So the tune, uh, the, the pegs, sorry, tend to slip out of tune very quickly. So before you play, they're very, very difficult to get in tune. The second reason is that the bridges, they often come uh, very flat and very thick. So they expect you to have them sanded down and have them fit that violin. 
and obviously you need to be a professional luthier or someone that knows what you're doing to have a violin fitted to the violin. One bridge does not fit all at all. The bridge I've got on here is actually a very small one compared to other bridges and other violins that I've got, for example. So you, you find it very difficult to isolate any of the strings. You'll hit the strings all at the same time. So it makes practicing and playing very, very frustrating. Um, because you don't have the instrument isn't of good quality and I know the old phrase the old adage a good workman never blames his tools but in this case absolutely you wouldn't expect a carpenter to try and you know put something together for you if they're sawing with a blunt saw or one of those screwdrivers where the head just you know has just is all shot and it's gone and you can't actually get it into the screw anymore so you absolutely can blame your tools and even more so with a violin so I would just uh, recommend that you just invest in a decent quality violin. The absolute minimum, I would suggest, is a probably about $250. I, I understand that to some of you that might be a lot of money. That's fine. That's fair play. But if you are going to invest your time, your effort, you know, a, a lot goes into learning to play the violin. It isn't just sort of something that you do on a whim or five minutes here and there. You know, it's it requires a lot of effort and uh, you know a, a lot from from you. So if you're going to invest your time into learning to the, to play the violin, you need to have something decent to do it on, or you physically will not prog progress, and that will that will just frustrate you and and take you back several steps. Okay, the second reason why you may not be proving on the violin is because your bow hold is not flexible or your bow hold is incorrect. So I've got many videos on how to hold the actual bow. I'll see if I can link one directly underneath. I'm not gonna go into all of that detail today, but you need to make sure that your thumb is bent and you've got a good bow hold. This is my bow hold. This is a hybrid, I'd say, between the Franco-Belgian bow hold um, and the Russian bow hold. It, it, it is not wrong, it's just a very different bow hold. Some people have more upright, some people are more slanted. It doesn't really matter as long as the basics are there but unless you can actually bend and be flexible with your fingers holding your bow that's going to hold you back because you're never going to have nice smooth transitions you're going to have trouble playing faster passages um, slower passages shorter passages it's just if your bow hold is inflexible it's going to hold you back when you're playing more towards the advanced stuff and you want to make your playing go from sort of quite basic level. You know, you've, you've done all the learning, you know where all the strings are, you can read music, you know where all the fingers are going, that kind of thing. But there's something not quite right with your playing. And that's when now when it comes down to the more kind of nitty gritty, the more nuances, the more finer things. So if you've got a nice, good, flexible bow hold, and your bow hold is as it should be, then that's gonna help you take your playing to the next kind of stages and hope, hopefully your playing will sound a lot more professional as well. And the third reason that you may not be improving on the violin, and this will come to no shock to anyone, is that you're just not practicing enough or you're not practicing well enough. So ideally you should be practicing every day. And I'm not just talking about playing, you know, five, 10 minutes every day. That isn't practicing, that's called waste of time. Practicing, the, my definition of practicing would be that at the end of your practice session, you are better than you were when you started your practice session or you've achieved something that you couldn't do at the start of your practice session. Now I'd say as a beginner, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this because I've got other videos on actual practicing, but as a beginner, you wanna be practicing every day, that's a given, because it's something new. So you wanna be getting your body used to and, adapt and adapted to playing a new instrument and something that's slightly foreign to you, but also you wanna be playing for about at least, at least 30 minutes a day maybe 30 to 60 minutes, depending what you're doing. If you're following my work one to 30 violin course that I mentioned at the start of this video, then I would probably say that you'll have about 30 odd minutes worth of stuff to practice. As you're kind of progressing, as you're progressing on to kind of uh, tutorial book two, then when you get a little, uh, a few lessons into to, to tutorial book two, you're going to be playing, you're going to be start, starting to play some of the exercises, some of the scales and things like that. So you'll be adding in technical exercises. So that will take up, what, 
15, 20, 25 minutes of time, then you perhaps, then perhaps you'll be going back to practice some of the pieces in the songbook one that you will have done after lesson 10. And these will take up, you know, however many you want to choose to practice, two, three at a time that you're working on maybe. This will take up another maybe 30 minutes of time. So already that's 60 minutes of time by the time you get to about lesson 20 or book two. So the more that you are learning and the more advanced you get, the longer your practice sessions will need to be. But you don't want to overdo them, but you certainly don't want to be just playing everything through once. Play your pieces through once, boom, I'm done, practiced. Absolutely not, complete waste of time. You might as well just really have not have, have bothered. So just making sure that you are practicing enough every day, ideally, and practicing well enough. So instead of just playing the pieces through once or twice, that's still not good enough. You've got to really hone into those pieces and you know record yourself playing. Make sure that there's nothing that's going wrong that you're not you know that you're that you're not choosing to listen to because you're you're too busy concentrating on what you're doing so you're not really teaching yourself if you record yourself you'll be able to play it back and go oh my god that was awful and then you'll be able to pinpoint exactly where it is in the music that you were stopping or starting a little bit but you didn't realize you were doing that when you were playing it through so there we go, just a very quick, uh, simple video. Three reasons why you may not be improving on the violin. This might not be exhaustive, there might be some more, but just three of the kind of main reasons that I think you may not be improving. Don't forget to check out the links to my one to 30 violin course and my patron and or my subscription website. Those will all be linked with more information underneath this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.